Hello again everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching today. Today we're doing watercolors and I'm glad you're with me today and hope you like this painting. Uh, we're using a photo that was provided by Eva Butkowska from uh, their Photos for Artists uh, Facebook page that I use. I get a lot of photos from there. There's a lot of material out there and a lot of interesting images and uh, so I like to use those. Um, we're painting on uh, Fabriano Artistico 300 pound watercolor paper 11 by 14 inches and uh, I want to go over to my computer and show you what I did with the images and how I got the sketch and how I got the value map and tell you a little bit about the original photo so hold on I'll show up over my computer in just a second I'll be right back there we go okay I think I'm at my computer now you should be able to see me and uh, hopefully uh, we're going to go through these uh, images today and it uh, won't take very long here at the computer but I want to show you uh, what I started with and uh, this is the original photo that I received <clears throat> from Photos for Artists on Facebook page and uh, it's from Eva Bukowska as I mentioned before and uh, you can see it's got some interesting shapes in it it's got a couple buildings it's got a boat it's got a little dock it's got a, a rock uh, uh, entry point for putting boats into the water there uh, and so the only thing this photograph didn't have was some depth it didn't have any sky it was all uh, green uh, trees and that sort of thing and uh, so I used my uh, Photoshop to take a whack at those trees on top and uh, cut them back and uh, let me show you that value map now um, as you can notice the top, I sort of uh, sculptured the top a little bit with my paintbrush on Photoshop and then I, I put in the uh, different values, a light, medium and dark value which is typically what I try to do on all my paintings to uh, show you the uh, various values I'm trying to stick with. Uh, <clears throat> if you can get three values in a painting that's usually pretty good uh, but I am going to try to show some depth. Those trees at the top are going to be lighter and more maybe blue and purplish than they appear in the photograph and uh, I'll bring another layer of trees and uh, toward the bank as we build toward the the, the uh, toward the, the uh, water line here. Um, let me show you the grid. This was the grid that I had. <clears throat> I lay over my 4 by 5 grid which just happens to fit very nicely on 11 by 14 watercolor paper or 11 by 15 you can stretch it a little bit but uh, so this is how you can do the sketch if you don't want to use the sketch that I provide you can uh, draw yourself a grid divide the page into four uh, vertical uh, squares into five uh, horizontal squares and draw them off and use that as your guide to uh, to paint from um, I also did a uh, little thumbnail sketch which I've been doing a lot of lately sort of trying to get my head around the uh, lights and darks in a painting so I can uh, uh, focus more on the darks. I find that I continually have difficulty getting enough dark in my paintings. Um, it's a problem a lot of people may have when their paintings don't really stand out and uh, strike you. Uh, it's usually because there's not enough contrast somewhere in the, in the uh, painting. And then lastly I'll show you my sketch which uh, I've had up on the screen here for a little while if you've been watching and uh, it's uh, a nice pretty nice sketch I try to take out some of the trees try to add some depth add some sky and uh, so that's what we're gonna paint from today so uh, hopefully you like this and we'll get going on it and I will go back over to my easel now and I will go through the paints and the brushes and uh, we'll get started on this painting Okay, I'm back at my easel now and I told you about the, uh, the uh, paper we're using. I told you about the uh, uh, size and weight and so forth. So let me go through the uh, paints and the brushes for you, which I do every time, even though many of you probably already know this, but I want to do it for people that may be watching for the first time. So let me go back to my palette here. This is my uh, Sterling Edwards palette and I have a set of his brushes here. This is a small blender brush. It's all bristle which is unusual for watercolor um, but I like to get some nice effects with it. I have a one inch and a half inch uh, flat brush here. I have about three rounds. I have a number 12, a number 8, and a number 4. I have a little rigger here, that uh, number 6 rigger. So that's the set of Sterling Edwards brushes that I have available. I may not use all those. I have a few more of these uh, squirrel mop brushes that I bought from Trakel. 
Um, I may use those, I may not. Sometimes they're, uh, they're good for certain types of uh, paint, putting on certain types of paint and washes, but I have those available if I need them too. So let me go around the paints now. Very quickly here we'll talk about, this is uh, neutral tint. This is primary blue cyan, ultramarine blue, permanent violet bluish, crimson lake, primary red magenta, cadmium red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre, cupric green, sap green, limon yellow, primary yellow, burnt umber, still to grain brown, Auvignon orange, and in my transparent watercolors I have here uh, cadmium orange and cerulean blue, which I don't use too much. I've been experimenting with those a little bit. I also have uh, lamp black and titanium white. Um, these I don't use hardly at all, but I do use them for certain things. In addition, I've put on a couple of other colors here. These are gouache. These are uh, opaque watercolors. Um, again, I don't use these very often, but they come in handy for sometimes uh, make something darker or make something uh, have a highlight on it. I have uh, black gouache and I have white gouache. So that's the, the, the paints. All of these paints, except for the gouache, uh, are Mimary Blue Italian watercolors. Um, I, these uh, cab, cadmium orange and uh, cad uh, or cerulean blue are actually uh, Grumbacher watercolors. So um, that's what I wanted to show you there. And uh, you see here if I can get the, the uh, palette in the right position. And I'm going to zoom in on my canvas now or my paper. And uh, oh, I meant to mention for to you take this off here. Uh, I also am using a little bit of uh, masking uh, fluid here and I uh, you can see it very very slightly here. You can see uh, around here these areas I want to be try to keep fairly white if I can um, and so I just use that a little bit. I use this uh, uh, masking uh, applicator. It's called Fine Line. Let me see if you can see that. Um, these are very nice because they have a very fine tip and for small areas they, they work very well. Um, and I just take it and fill it with my normal uh, um, my normal uh, masking uh, fluid and uh, this little tip is uh, very 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 small. Um, see how small it is here um, and it uh, puts on very fine lines. It's great for putting on uh, uh, very tight or small lines for trees and that sort of thing. Uh, but anyway, I don't use it very often, but once in a while I find a painting that it would lend itself to. So that's what we're doing today. And if I can get this thing back together, I will uh, get started here. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, okay, so you can see the other masking fluid here that I have around. So I'm going to start out by wetting this entire painting down and uh, and get it uh, get a, a total wash on it and uh, then we'll go from there. So I'm going to start here with, I want to get zoomed in as close as I can, get my camera controls working here. Okay, I think you can see it. I've got it over to the side a little bit so that when I put my palette back on you'll be able to see most of the painting uh, without me moving that palette around. So all right, let's get going. I've got my uh, big one inch brush here and I'm going to just get some clear water and we're going to start uh, which is some clear water. We're going to soak this, this paper uh, with a lot of clear water, which I do very often. Uh, you can't probably can't see this sketch very well simply because I, as I put it on, I, I come back and sort of erase off some of the um, some of the marks so that they don't show up uh, very much in the final uh, painting. Uh, but if I erase them too much, then I can't see them and I don't know what I'm doing either. So um, I want to try to make these uh, as light as possible. So if, particularly if I have a light area, I don't want them to uh, show up. And uh, um, that's why I erase them. All right. Let's see here. I'm just going to wet that down and let it run. It's, this is 300 pound paper, as I mentioned to you, and uh, it will it will uh, absorb a lot of water. And uh, 
I see Lindy's on today. Thank good to see you, Lindy, from South Africa. And uh, if you have a comment or a question, folks, please don't hesitate to type into the, the window here. And uh, I have a computer up here by my elbow, and uh, I can uh, answer your questions, hopefully, if I remember to take a look at the uh, computer here by my side. So uh, we are ready to go. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of color in this sky, not too much. I'm going to use a little of my uh, ultra blue here and uh, pick up a little of the uh, uh, my burnt sienna. Burnt sienna and ultra blue make an interesting gray and you can get a, a nice gray color with uh, add it to the blue side if you want it to be more blue or hey, this is the brown side and we'll warm it up to get it to the uh, brown side but uh, basically I've got a nice uh, color I'm going to just kind of go over this entire wash this entire thing off with this these colors here uh, and uh, I've got since I have my pure white areas covered I'm not too worried about uh, getting this paint on some of the white areas that I want to keep white. Usually that's a problem. I have to paint around them so I, I don't uh, do a complete wash like this, but it's uh, kind of fun to do this. Um, and uh, so everything's going to have this sort of this underlying bluish gray tone to it, even the water down here in the front and the foreground. And uh, so we'll uh, get that all on and uh, get ready to go here. I want to put a little bluish down here because I want to have that sky reflect a little bit into this water. And when I did that, I want to go back maybe to the sky and put just a little of that blue up here. I didn't get a lot of blue in that sky up above. So let's put just a little in there. Leave some area for uh, some clouds maybe, I don't know. Uh, but that sky is going to run down and cover. Uh, okay, so you realize I'm painting vertically, which I always do. Um, and um, so this paint, this paint's going to run. It's going to run from top to bottom. So I don't want to keep it from messing up here. Okay, there we go. Um, and it's collecting on these areas over here above the, the masking fluid that I have, which is not a problem. Um, it's not going to hurt anything as long as it doesn't run when I don't want it to run. Um, so that's pretty much the sky. Actually, that's the first underlaying of everything. Uh, so I'm going to change the colors a little bit in here. I don't want to use uh, the exact same colors, um, but I am going to try to get some bluish green in the distance. Um, a little bit of sap green here to kind of give myself a little bit of a tone for this these trees that are in the background maybe even a little bit of this violet throw a little violet in there anything that's blue or violet uh, goes back in the distance it recedes back so if you're trying to make trees give the impression that you have uh, depth um, you want to make the trees in the far off distance a bluish, bluish or purplish color. So let's see what happens when I throw this in there. Because this is wet, now it's going to be all runny and fuzzy. Um, and I'm just going to put it in. I'm going to throw some more blue in there maybe in some places. Um, I'm just going to let it sort of go across the top. I'm getting some running here. That's all right. No problem. Uh, I'm going to paint over that. It's going to be lighter. It's going to dry lighter. Remember, these paints all dry somewhere around 20 percent, maybe 30 percent lighter um, than when you first put them on. So if you want a good strong color, you have to think about that and try to uh, second guess the drying process here. So you have uh, see, some greens in there, a few 
few greens over here. Right, so I'm just kind of putting in some uh, things to let it run down the paper here. And uh, since it's uh, paper's all nice and wet, it's going to run all over the place, but that's okay. I'm going to, uh, this will dry a lot lighter, and uh, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, just throw it in. This big old brush is uh, good for this kind of stuff. And I maybe put another little layer there, make a little bit of it darker, give myself some variation in a few spots. Um, this area here, I wanted to have some dark, but darker uh, trees. So when you want the paint to be darker, when you're painting wet on wet, you have to get more paint in the brush and take water out of the brush. You take the water out by soaking up here by the furrow, 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 uh, where the bristles come out of the top of the brush. And uh, so we'll just throw some of these in and uh, let them mix and blend and blur. Now I'm really giving you some good tips here for getting depth in your painting. This photograph had no depth at all, really. Um, but with what I'm doing here, I'm getting some very good depth. And all I'm doing is just laying this big brush down and letting it, the paint come off, coming back, getting a few different colors and mixing them in. Um, so these are all pine trees evergreen trees um, down here Let's see this is going to be kind of dark down here like that all right so as I start coming forward I want to get more green in it and less blue and I want it to get a little darker as well but because I've got all this wet paper here, I have to be careful with it that I don't uh, let it dry out so much that it uh, fades back into the background. This could be a very fast painting today. I don't know. I've got some details to put in around this boat, around these uh, um, cabins. I'm going to be using a smaller brush here shortly, but uh, I want to kind of get this a lot of this in if I can, this, these trees. Down here I've got some more trees. Don't want that to run. Careful. Soak it up. Okay, there like this. Okay, so I'm outlining my buildings here carefully. So let's put a few more greens in here. Got some greens coming down over this boat back in here. So I've got masking setting in there, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'll be able to peel that masking off and find my the mast for the boat will show up again once I peel that off. Down here, down to out there. All right. Um, I have some greens around here. Okay, so can you see the depth in there now? That's uh, making quite a quite a distinct difference. See the top of that. 
I didn't have it all the way up so you can see the top. There we go. All right, so I've done nothing but use this big old brush with just clear water and then picking several different paints like my blues, my purples, my sap green, and just mix them together on the palette, mix them together on the paper, um, and uh, let this kind of go. Um, see some areas where I'm going to add some more um, pick up lightness green up a little bit. I want to get some things a little gr more grassy looking maybe hopefully in some of these areas under here under this uh, where are we here? This is the got some posts here that I want to paint around. These are posts that I didn't mask out, so uh, if they're going to be lighter, I have to uh, uh, paint around them. If they're going to be darker, it's not a problem. I just paint right over them. Uh, under here, I got some areas that are grassy. Another post right here. There, we'll leave it look like that. I'm kind of reacting to the paper here and what's on the paper using a half inch brush and uh, painting around some posts there that are holding this little dock up. Maybe some more of this. Right here. I'm going to put some dark under here after a little bit that you have grasses that sort of go alongside this building right in here it's a much lighter area of grass back in here as long as this is sort of damp and wet I can kind of merge these together and lose that lose that line there's a path that actually comes down to this area. So let's just put some stuff in here and all right, what's over here? This is sort of a it's a brown, sort of a brownish color. Um, pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna here and see what I can put in around this side of the building right here. And this kind of comes down and just works its way down here. There's a Okay. So I'm painting in these areas now to let this paint dry up here as much as I can. It's uh, uh, it, it's not going to get fully dry unless I come back and put a put a hair dryer on it. But uh, I want to get it drier so I can come in and put another layer of trees with uh, darker paint. And uh, in the meantime, we'll just paint these areas in around the bottom of this shed and uh, make sure I don't lose track of my dock going out there. And under this shed we have some very, very dark, get some neutral tint out here. Throw it in with this mixture I've got. Under here we've got some dark. It's not going to be dark enough. I'm going to have to come back and probably darken it down, but we'll start with that. And over here, like this. Very, very dark. Here, 
opening in a nice little base. So it goes into this. It's being shadowed by the building above it. <laughs> Big dark space here. There's a bit of a dark space right there. Have any questions, folks, please uh, put them in the window and I will see if I can answer them. Another dark area here. Got some shadow under this tree. There's a tree that kind of comes down to the bank here. All right. Um, it's not bad for my first pass. I probably could have put some water in here. Um, and I'll just leave that for later. Let me go back and see if this is dry enough to come back. Still pretty, it feels pretty damp. Um, but I'm going to give it a try. And I try to uh, paint for you guys and uh, try to keep a uh, keep it within a certain number of minutes. I uh, probably take more chances with the paints in terms of how wet they are and uh, how wet the paper is than I would if I were just doing this without um, having sort of a time limit imposed on myself. Um, so I'm going to put in some now some other trees here that's going to help make this uh, look like another layer of trees coming forward. Um, I have to get it darker than what I've got here. Um, get some more dark in here and let's put some of this in. And there are just several, a lot of trees, a whole bunch of trees setting in here. Um, and I'm going to just kind of paint around some other ones, leave some room here for some other trees to sort of stand out in the in the foreground. So you've probably seen me do this kind of painting before if you follow my watercolors very much. Um, it's just a nice way to paint when you've got uh, semi-dry paper here. and. Uh, and just kind of use this brush in a this way back and forth mix it up put in some different colors different sizes these trees really are just sort of a, a grouping of trees um, and they all sort of run together so you can't hardly tell them apart but um, I will make this Give some interesting shapes in there if I can get them. Pull out a few more greens with some of my yellows and maybe lighten some of this up up here. It's just one big mass of trees back in there. So mix it up, paint it up, and uh, Could actually do some good negative painting if I wanted to get in there and do that. I've shown you that before where you take a, a dark and you do this sort of a paint on both sides like this and then come up here and do a thing like that. Leave some, leave some branches and come back on the other side and paint the other side of the tree if I can do this here. If you put this on the other side I've just created a nice little tree for you. Split it off. And I didn't really paint the tree, I painted around it. It's a negative painting. Do another one here, maybe. I've got some masking there in the middle. I'll be able to take off in a minute to show, uh, show the uh, trunks of a couple of trees in here. 
All right, I don't want to get too bogged down with this in here, but I want to uh, let you see how you can create this nice set of trees and uh, Thanks, Lindy. Appreciate your comments. Yeah, the background came out pretty nice. It was just, that's wet and wet. And uh, if you can do wet and wet like that, um, you can get some very nice effects. Um, and uh, here we go. I'm just making a tree trunk here for you. So some of these tree trunks are uh, being painted around. All right, um, I got a couple more there. Let's see, over here I got some more coming down. There's a big dark one back there in the back, right in this area. Let me get a dark color here if I can get it dark enough. Purple and uh, neutral tint, throw some night sap green in there. Sap green kind of lightens things up because it's a little bit lighter color, but um, in this area right here I have some trees that sort of take this path and go up here like this, come back. trees here. So by making that all one color back there I was able to uh, give myself some background behind these trees that gives you, so let you see the depth. So these trees now I want to make sure that I don't leave them kind of hanging. I want to make sure they're in bed. I'm going to get myself a little bit of this greenish color that's the ground and grass here. Put a little, some shadows under here, connect these tree bottoms to the grass. So you end up seeing that they're actually part of the landscape. They're not sitting above it or glued on. I've got another big tree coming up over this guy over here. So I'm going to throw in some stuff there. Put this guy's tree in here. Just zigzag back and forth. Uh, Give yourself some room. Don't forget to group them together because what tells them apart is this, the edges out here. You can tell that's a certain kind of a tree by what's on its edge. Um, and you don't have to worry a whole lot about what's on the inside down here um, as long as it's pleasing to the eye. Um, you'll have a nice looking set of trees back here. Okay, behind this guy I'm going to put in some more tree stuff back here. Probably getting boring for you. I'm getting a lot of trees in this thing, but I'll get these in so I don't have to come back and mess around with them too much. So if I just keep this area all kind of messed together as one big mass of trees. You will see the trees even though I'm not painting every every branch and every pine bough and that sort of thing because I'm telling you what it is at the edge. I want to lighten these up. I've been putting some more blue in. Or not blue, some yellow, light yellow here. My yellow is getting polluted with my green. Let me clean that out. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, we'll lighten this up. I've got some more grasses that are showed up back in here somewhere. Well, they're down in this area. I've already put some of that in down in here. Another tree trunk right here. I'm going to paint around right there. And I'm going to come up here and put some of that other coloring in here. So lighten it up, change the color. Don't don't keep using the same colors all the time. Um, variation is the key to successful painting. Contrast, variation, interesting shapes. If you can do those things, remember to do them while you're painting. You're well on your way. Okay, I have to uh, step back and look at this. I haven't taken a step back for a while. Let me go back here and just look at that and see if I'm getting the nice colors I want. So over here, I've got this other big tree that's kind of sticking out here. I put some purple on him and some greens. Kind of sticks over here. Big tree up here. I'm getting a lot of things that look like they're um, little pointed things sticking out there, which I'm not crazy about. So let me see if I can adjust those a little bit by just putting in some more things like this. These flat brushes are really great for this kind of stuff. Um, I may want to come back and I've got some whites I'm going to put in here, but I want to see if I can get a few more scrape outs by taking the razor blade of some type like this. Um, at the right time you can get a, uh, get a big buckle in there, don't I? Look at that. Um, you can scrape out that way. You can put masking in like I did, so I'll show you the masking in a bit. But uh, these scrape outs um, are nice if the paper is just the right, it's kind of like a, it's a tricky thing to try to get that when it's got the right amount of uh, wetness in it. Uh, so you can get these scraped out shapes to appear. If you scrape them out too soon, um, they'll just go back and turn to black. If you Scrape them out too late, nothing will happen. If you get them at the right amount of water in the paper, um, they'll leave a rough white texture like you see there, like a, a tree trunk. All right, let's see here. I'm going to get my bigger brush here and maybe try some more trees on this right side, but I'm getting tired of uh, painting so slowly with my half-inch brush. I'm going to get this big brush over here and we'll start doing in some things over here. Paint faster maybe if I can get some more paint. i got to get more paint on this brush. And it's going to have to be dark. Put in some things here. Just cover a lot of paper at once and then just come back and fill in areas. It's all fairly dark over here. Um, so I can get a lot more paper covered with this bigger brush. And many artists will tell you to try to use the biggest brush you can for as long as you can. And I sort of violated that. I didn't come in here and use the biggest brush. I use it when I was putting the background in and uh, 
some of this, but I kind of got away from it and uh, got down to that half inch flat. And so I spent a lot of time over here with fine trees and but you can see the difference now. You can see how these are much more abstract looking over here, this big brush. So just make yourself some nice abstract shapes. Um, I've got some masking I'm going to pull out there. Okay, and uh, so I'll have some nice trees over there. This is going to pick up some of this greenish color. Might as well throw a tree or two in here while I'm at it. I don't know if you can see that. I see that in the uh, camera. It looks like the light's reflecting such that it's hard to see that over there on the right side. Put a few more dark things here. Connect them together. All right. Try to keep the distances between these different widths, different heights. Don't make them all one row of like trees that are cut off. They never grow that way. And if they do, you should paint them this way. You should paint them so they're not um, perfectly aligned, not perfectly next to each other. Um, variety. When you're trying to take a scene like this that's very wide, it's probably maybe a hundred yards wide, and you're trying to get some uh, interesting shapes, you can't paint everything that's there. It'll drive the viewer crazy. This over here is a little too perfect. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to sort of Take that, maybe pull a few things down in this grasses here to help them look like they're... See, I want you to see the, the depth. I want you to see the decline in the, uh, the river's edge here, or the bay. I'm not sure if this is bay or river, what it is, but uh, certainly a harbor for these boats to come into. And uh, at least one boat. Doesn't look like it can hold too many boats. It's not that big. Yeah, Lindy, that was the uh, thing with this photograph. Well, the original photo didn't have any depth in it at all, so I was trying to uh, trying to capture that by uh, putting this background in and uh, see if I can get a nice trunk out of this thing. There we go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had to sort of create that. That's sort of my artistic license to the photographer who may not like what I did with her photo, but uh, when they put photos out here on uh, on the Photos for Artists page, you can kind of do with them whatever you want. And so I'm doing that. A big old tree over here, let me put some. I'm just painting with this razor blade now. Okay. And those little things will sort of point back into the painting. Okay, there we go. Enough of that for a while. All right, now I'm going to get down and do this uh, building on the left here. See if I can get it uh, put in. Let me see here. Another step back. I'm trying to make sure I don't mess up this uh, <clears throat> area here with the uh, behind this building. So I need to uh, analyze that just a little. So I need some bright red. I don't know if I've even got that red. I may have to create that red. The 
The building on the left has a, has a tree that's, or not a tree, but a uh, roof line that's sort of muddy gray, it looks like to me. So I want to try to uh, see if I can get something in there that makes that stand out. I'm going to put a little water on that just to um, see if I can get a uh, some nice texture in there. The brush was a little dirty, had a little green in it, but that's okay. Those trees, the roofs have some green in them, I'm sure. Um, but I want to see if I can get a little bit of this violet, get a little mixture of it in there that's a little different. And start up here and kind of come down. about some because I wet this down I've got some nice soft stuff that's running there Go down here to the edge my flat, big flat brush. Sometimes these nylon bristles kind of spread apart and they give you these interesting shapes that sometimes you don't want, but sometimes they're kind of neat. Okay, over here I've got put a little line above. Okay, I'm going to leave a little gap there below and let that dry and then put a tree over it. Um, let's see what else there. Okay. All right, that tells you that's a roof. Um, I don't have to make it all the same color. I don't want to make it all the same color. Um, that would be boring, would be amateurish. So, uh, let's see. One little area of these grasses that's kind of bothering me. I'm going to come back in here and sort of taper that down so that it looks like it's more that path kind of curves up, up and away. So I wanted to fix that while I'm thinking about it. This path over here sort of sticks out, has some grass over it. All right. I don't have to do too much there. I think I'm going to be able to tell the story that's coming down. All right, now the side of this building, I got to clean some of this junk out of my palette. I got way too much junk in here. So let me, give me a second and let me clean out some of this. Give me some space. All right, let's see if we can find a red that's going to come close to that red. It's really an orange, a sort of a red-orange here. This cad, cad red may be close. And it is very close. It looks like, on well, my palette anyway, when I put that there, it looks like that's pretty close. Um, so let's try it and see what happens right in here. Leave a little white barrier there for a... It is a bright red. But by using some water come down like that yeah
put a little purple in there to uh, change the color a little bit. Go back and get my red, bring it down. Okay, so I have again some color on that building. It's not just all one painted color. The other side, the front side over here has, it's a little bit grayed down. So how would we gray down CAD red? Come on, this is a test. Carla, thank you. Um, gray down red. What's the compliment? What's across the color chart from red? It's a green, right? So I want to gray that red down, take a little bit of my sap green, and touch it in there. All of a sudden I start getting a gray, greenish, brownish red color. Now a brighter green or a different green will give me a different um, gray down, but that's how you gray your colors down. If you say you need to gray something down, find the complement. You want to gray down orange, put in purple. You want to gray down red, put in green. You want to gray down blue, you can use an orange. But it's all complements. That's the secret. The secret I'm giving you today. That probably needs a little more red in it. Let's put a little more red in it. Let's get a little closer. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to skip by this window here. Door that's lighter. Gray it down, change the color. here pull it out like this let it go merge and this over here I don't care about I'm going to put a tree over that uh, I'll just finish it off here okay so that is about what I want to do with that building um, well, I got these colors going. I might as well go back and there was some a few rafters hanging down here. I don't know if you can see that. It's probably too hard for you to see uh, the roofing part of this this uh, fascia board or whatever they call it. It's kind of fallen off, and so it kind of gave an interesting texture there to some of the rafter boards were showing up and the, the white had fallen off. All right, let's go back now and get my get this color again. Bright red. And let's see here. Go back and put it over here. Probably need to take that masking fluid off. I'm thinking might be time. <clears throat> I have to come back and fill that in if I don't cover enough. Change the color a little bit, make it a little cooler. Some spots. <clears throat> Lindy, you got it right. Hello, Simeon from Kiev. Oh boy, welcome. All right, I'm going to put this, it's another, another window over here. All right, this comes out down here, leave room for the window. Make it a little darker there just to give me a change in the, the plane, plane change accent. And all right, there, that's a lot of the red is done. <clears throat> Go 
over here I'm going to come back and put a little gray into this door here. If I can find a little gray. Right in here. Drop a dark color at the top. And then get some clear water in the brush. Sort of pull it down. hard to see that but that's I do have a uh, monitor behind me that I keep looking back so if you see my head turned back you know I'm looking at the monitor back there um, there's a uh, I don't know what you call it it's some sort of an electrical connector here sitting on the end of this building that has electric wires going out of it going to the building over to the right so I'm going to put this little blob in here most people wouldn't even know what that is they wouldn't even care but um, sort of sets there and holds electrical wire I gotta gotta draw a wire to this other building back here after a bit <coughs> I have my gray there. Um, back in here in this little area, there's it's. Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like it goes under this building. Looks like they could get a rowboat or something back in here and go under this because it's got some. Looks like some water stuff going on back there. I didn't get this uh, color here all the way out to the edge like I wanted. Okay, there we go, that's a little better. All right, now, um, so this is starting to connect with water here. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of water, clear water on my paper now. I might just put this water in, I don't know. Um, leave that boat till almost last. Soak this paper a little bit more. Well, we've gone about an hour, I guess, a little more. Um, in this water, it is, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue sky color, a little bit of that. Uh, the water is not moving too much. It's really kind of stable. There is some some movement in it. Can't even see that on the monitor I'm looking at behind here, so it's not dark enough. Need to make there are some areas that have to be a little darker. There we go. That's better. Because that's all wet now, you see how it's running and it's blending? Um, there was a darker area of reflection in here in the middle somewhere right in here. Like that. Just going to let those run together and see what they look like. And this down here is actually lighter, so I'm going to just take another swoop across there and kind of clean that off. Here's the water for you folks. Um, I got the boat and a little bit of the bank to do and a couple more trees and uh, I'll be done. I got to take that uh, masking tape off or masking fluid, not tape. Um, so let's see here. Maybe I can get just a few. It's too early. Um, if you can get some horizontal lines in here, uh, it'll help tell the story about water. But it's mostly these vertical reflections that uh, tell a story about water and so what are you going to do you're going to put some reflections in here right so let's see if we can find some reflection material that 
red barn, that red, red barn, he needs to reflect. So let's put a few reflections of him in on here. Trees go above him, but as long as this is wet, he'll be able to get some some kind of reflection going on and it will blend together, blur together and give you some nice effects. Vertical strokes and then come back and let's put in some of the green. I like the way that brush is working so let me use that over here. Some green, some darks here. So these other colors that are above. The big one here, there's some dark ones over here and over here. I'm not trying to reflect these trees accurately like you would in a mirror. Um, it's not really a, a mirror type reflection um, because the water is moving a little bit, but uh, as long as that paper is soft, is wet, um, I'm getting some nice uh, vertical um, strokes in there and it's, it's blending together nicely. Um, probably need to have a little more over here on the right side. These trees over here. If you can see that or not there. Okay. And I could even put in some more vertical type uh, things that would reflect some actual tree trunks here and there. Um, that's about all you need to do. You don't need to try to paint every, every one. Just above the palette. I just above the palette. I see it <laughs> right in here. Steve Hardy, there's an eye just above the palette. Okay, and he's talking about this little place right in there that I just kind of fixed, I think. I took my palette off the screen for a second. I couldn't see what he was talking about. Put the palette back on there and I saw the eye just instantly. Thanks, Steve. All right. Um, What are we doing now? Okay, we've got uh, some of this uh, dock and we've got some some of these little rocky things. I'm going to see if I can throw in a few rocks here, maybe pick up some of my browns. Got this burn umber, still the grain browns, a beautiful brown. Still the grain and maybe some ochre. Um, see if I can get some of this, uh, this little rocky bank here. Um, this area. Use my pointed brush here. So we'll make these darker and lighter. Leave some holes, some gaps. Okay, and we'll just kind of let it run right into this water down here. And that might even be a good place to put a little bit of a reflection right under here. Vertical brush strokes tell the story. Okay, so now I've got some, well, I got this dark brown out. I'm going to get this, this uh, brush, come back in and fill in some of these pillars that are holding this building up. <clears throat> over here we've got a few, oops, they're not in there, they're over here. I have like a little ladder type of contraption going on over here. So let's put a couple steps in there and some other dark stuff here. we got some dark going down to the beach here. I've got to put a big tree right in there so I'm going to kind of leave that and uh, some of these are sort of gray, grayish. So 
So let's put in a little bit of darker things here in some areas like that. I'm just kind of fine tuning that a little bit. Um, I'll be doing more fine tuning than I need to, but I'm going to, well, I got this brush over here. I'm going to put in a dark window right here. Like that. Another little dark window right up here. And I have another dark well, that's actually I got the masking over that. I can't take that off yet, or I can't put that in yet. Um, put in some dark places in here under these stairs. There's steps that go down um, into the water, or into the whatever's in the water, like a boat. Or I don't think they swim over here, but uh, I'm going to put in some dark shadows in here to kind of make this more look like it's rocky. And some dark in here. All right, kind of getting through with that building. Um, well, I better put that tree in before I forget it. I'm going to forget that tree as sure as I'm standing here. Um, it's big. It's a tree that kind of laps, overlaps this building right here. Goes up this way and sort of gives you something to overlap. If you can overlap things, you're, uh, it really helps with the depth perception. So I've got this big old tree that kind of almost comes down to the water right here. And uh, so. That comes over here. That's about good enough. Got it really good and dark. So i going up here like that. Okay, it kind of closes off that end. To keep your eye in the painting. You always want to try to block your painting in if you can. Uh, you have some trees or something to do that with. I mean, yes, I have tried to paint with my left hand. Uh, sometimes my right hand, actually, and matter of fact, it's happening now. My right hand is uh, cramping up a little bit, uh, and uh, so I uh, sometimes that's a good idea to try to paint with my other hand. I'm just never sure of the results when I do that. I kind of have a little uncertainty there. I'm going to make this darker down here so we show this building and some of this going in back here. Um, I got some masking. So we'll put a few uh, ripples in here like this. Uh, let some of them come over this way. We're getting back into this dock over here. It's really dark. So I'm going to put in a few things there to help help with it. Um, this area down here had some really dark um, ripples in it down here and even some uh, rough texture if I can get it see that rough brush texture where you just get a little paint in your brush and just move it very very quickly across the paper and you just it leaves little bumps that are basically the uh, paper catching the paint off of your brush to do that right in here too, very quickly. Like that. A few more things. All right. Um, we got a bunch of little whites in there. Try to get those out. All right. Now, I think I've got to start. I got to take this masking off. I got a uh, mask removal tool here. Um, so you can just sort of push it and it just rubs this stuff right off of the paper. Getting a 
quite a few nice white areas where I put that masking fluid. Um, these were only problem with this masking fluid now as you see what's happening my sketch of my boat is basically gone totally wiped it out just erased it uh, by taking these things off they pick up the pick up the graphite or the pencil or whatever's on your uh, paper and uh, remove it Okay, I think I've got most everything off. One little one down here at the bottom of this boat. Okay, so I've got the boat to do, uh, pretty much, and uh, a few more things in that uh, building back there in the back. I'm gonna have to fix this. I kind of messed that up a little bit. Um, so I think I've got all the, so you see a lot of, Trees, tree trunks back in there. They're probably too bright. They're white, almost white. Uh, but I'm gonna go back. I didn't have a good clean edge on this roof line back here, so I'm gonna put them back in. Better than is that now. All right, that's okay. And then that roof back here is sort of a I'm gonna just put a little bit of my lavender color on there. Put it down. Good enough for that. <clears throat> I see what I did wrong. I uh, my uh, door here. This this is actually the a door that's hanging open, but over here there's a black opening. This is really dark. There, that's the, then, so the other is the door that's open. And I have a little bit of work to do to clean up around that door right here. Let's see if I can get, still have some of this red color in my palette. <clears throat> Let's put that down like that. Pulls down a, some interesting shapes and over here there okay so now in this really dark dark shape here if i let that set just about the right amount of time i can come in there and scrape out some marks out of it um, and uh, we'll make it uh, look like there's something inside that building. Okay, over here I've got some more dark, dark ones under here. Holding this building up, we've got little pillars again. And um, sort of runs into the grasses. So let's put the grasses back in. I thought this was going to be a faster painting, but it's uh, taking quite a bit of time. I haven't even done my boat yet. I have to go back and re-sketch my boat, I think. You guys are going to be tired of watching me before this is over. Some steps coming down. Got some posts in here. Go down like this and kind of go down into the water like that. The 
posts were actually, I think, white, more white than I'm showing them here. We've got some beam things going between them. Over here, this is the uh, top of the, the decking here. So inside here, we've got some more darks, really dark, dark stuff going on here. On this side. That one post is really hard, not standing out very well, so let's darken him up a little bit. Put a few more things on him. So over here, I'm gonna use some different browns and make him a little darker. Like that. Come back under here, let's get under this dock. Make a little room here for this post. Some posts underneath. Dock, it goes like that. Run into the back of the boat, I think, yes. Okay. So we'll I'm using a number four round <clears throat> number four round for this folks. And uh, I'm gonna pull this down into the water with some clear water and all of a sudden I've got runny nice so Be careful going back into this water too many times. One nice tool is this big blender brush. Um, you can take it and get some just clear water in it and get the water out of it with your paper towel and just pull it down like this and it really tends to feather any hard edges that you don't want. It gets rid of them basically. Uh, a neat uh, neat idea but it's a bristle one inch bristle brush that uh, I used when I started this painting out all right now I'm gonna come in and get this deck in a little bit more of this deck here I think I need some of this ochre color put it in here across there That. Instead of making it white, I'm sort of making it <clears throat> making it ochre. Um, uh, this building now, I think I can maybe scrape something out of it in this in this doorway here. See what happens when I do. Oh, it's still too wet. I think maybe if I use my razor blade. angular thing in there if I can. It's really hard for you to see that but basically it's just some some little scrape outs to uh, make it look like there's something inside that uh, doorway. Um, a little bit of kind of a container or something over here, a barrel, I don't know what that is. Don't really care. So we'll make these look like steps coming down. Um, all right, get some more.
Hopefully that's looking like I want it to. If any of you have to leave, don't feel bad about taking off. I do have this all recorded. It will be edited and put back on YouTube in a couple of days, two or three days, maybe. All right, um, so um, I know I've been going a little longer than normal, but uh, this is a fair more complicated painting than I uh, thought it might be when I started as fast as we were getting the background in, but uh, I kind of like the way it's looking right now. And uh, so we got this boat left and a little bit of work to do there. Um, I might as well put this window in back here while I've got my small brush. Okay. And a few little marks to uh, outline that. <clears throat> Those shadows here and there. Okay, boat, boat, boat. I don't know, there's probably no way I have that color in my palette. I don't know these paints that I have here. I'm not sure I can find it, but I will try to get a blue or a greenish blue color. Um, I hate to take the time to do this, but I need to kind of come back in here. Let's see, this is all pretty straightforward. There's a cross here. Say um, about here's where the back of that is. A little window here is a, a thing near a buoy there. Um, there's some things coming down the back of the boat here. Up here it kind of curves around. bunch of junk on top of this boat. <clears throat> um, another thing up here. All right, I just put a few marks there to indicate the this boat. Um, so let's see what I can do to find a, a color here. It's really a crazy green. It's a not a turquoise, it's not a I'm sure what color you would call that. Well let's start with some yellow. And see what happens when I put a little cupric green in that yellow. Cupric green is almost like a viridian. Might be getting close. My primary yellow and my uh, cupric green are giving me this interesting greenish color. Not exactly right, um, but I don't have to be exactly right. So let's get in here and put this thing in. We've got a post there. Oh, actually, I left some room here. Gray it down. I want to gray the green down. What did I do? I picked up some red over here. Why did I gray it down? I wanted to show some some uh, dirtiness from the water, I guess. Um, 
sides. I'm going to put those sides on there now. That's a not a perfect green, but it's pretty close. It's not doesn't match the photo exactly, but um, no big deal. Just put a just a curve around up like this. And there it comes back down same deal I want this to have some other color in it some darker color down here at the bottom so while it's wet you can put this other color over then it will uh, give you that look So, it's mixing colors on the paper. Let's see, these are posts, that's a post, that's a tree trunk. That's part of the dock that I missed going in there, so I'm gonna have to come back and put that in. Uh, but anyway, this boat is, uh, just needs some little architectural things on top of it to kind of Highlight some things. Get some stuff here and get some more this brownish gray color or whatever. So a couple of and down here there's a uh, bit of a shadow right there there's a couple of dark <coughs> windows right here a little bit of a thing here and there's a almost a very bright orange Bowie sitting right here. And there's a life saving thing right here. And another one kind of back here somewhere. Okay, there's some, <clears throat> I don't know what this is out here, but it's sort of a All right, getting there, folks. Getting there. It's another. Post. There's um, some kind of little bumper thing here on the back. A few more posts like that one go get this one to make it a little browner gray dark on one side And the thing I forgot over here, the area I forgot, was this under here. It's a dark, dark, dark black again. We do these. Okay, so there's some really dark darks. 
I need to darken these over here. It's all shadow. All right. Um, what else? I know there was some, uh, a little bit of this ochre. I think I want to put a little more of that deck. Decking in here somewhere. Is that? Um, up here in this door, there's a. Kind of hangs out like that. We have a. See, there's another window there that I totally missed sitting right in here. All right. I think I'm probably overstaying my welcome here, folks. Um, been going about an hour and a half, I guess. I see some things. I may touch this up a little bit after I sign off, but <clears throat> we have some of these posts that are holding this guy up. I have to put those in, or he doesn't look like he's connected to the ground. This all kind of comes down and connects in here. Um, I forgot to mention was I got to put this. Electrical wire of some sort going there. Um, there are some things coming off this boat that I kind of hold it in. Doesn't look very good. I don't like that. Let me see if I can do something better through here since this is wet. So I made the ropes connect with the, since I darkened all that, I was able to make those ropes kind of connect. Um, I think that might be enough. Um, take one more look here. Just a, just a bit of a shadow on this side of the building. I'm gonna put a very light, it's got green in it, get that green out of there. Maybe I can get the green out of there. Very light wash right here. Like that. Gives me a little bit of a shadow. Um, kind of indicate where the similar thing here with make this just a little darker than the other edge. That one too. All right, so I've sent of Messed it up just a little, enough to uh, make you think it's a uh, nice harbor scene. All right, let's see here, folks. A little bit of splatter I like to do. Take this big rigger that's got a big, long bristles on it and just sort of do some splattering here and there, up here maybe. Just sort of loosens everything up. It kind of makes it look like it's, there are spots that are, that weren't painted there. I see a tree I left undone. Tree trunk, this thing right here. Yes, I left him undone. Even left a few, there were some log type things that were sitting here. I left those out by accident. Let's put this in, kind of connecting to the ground and go back and get some more dark on this particular post. There and here. Dark on the left side. Round into the ground. 
clear water, smooth it out. Where's my smaller brush? I need those bristles. These, these bristles and these brushes are nice for blending stuff out. Losing an edge, finding an edge. Okay, um, thinking that's probably enough. Put a few things along this road here, this walkway, to make it look like it's coming down. All right, don't need to do too much more there. Pick that up and okay. Um, what else? The only thing I could probably do is just take a little bit of this light wash, light gray wash, kind of tone down a few of these bright trees sticking up here. They're almost too bright. Um, just take a little bit of that, some of that white out of here. It's, sometimes that white gets to be too much. That way it's not, you're not looking up there at those things because they're so white. Here, same thing. All right. Um, I hate to keep finding stuff to do, but I found one more area that I need to just touch. The bottom of this boat needs to have a, sort of a dark line across here to kind of separate it from the water. And of course, pull that down into the water. It's not much of a dark separator, is it? <clears throat> pull it down into the water. That come back with my handy dandy brush here and another swoop across there like this. See an area I totally didn't paint. Boy, good thing I didn't stop. Uh, this area over here, there's a, a bank and there's a bunch of yellow ochre grasses here that I totally left out. That's really too strong. Put that color somewhere else so I don't just leave it over there. there and then take some of this darker brown and bring it down into the water. Come on. All right. I will stop. I will stop right now. After I put my name in here, we will be done. Right here. There you are, folks. Uh, Nova Scotia Harbor with a lot more detail than I thought I was going to get into, but I hope you like it. Hope you can give it a try and uh, see how you do. Uh, the sketches are there. I should be able to find them. I found out I didn't have them on the uh, announcement page, but uh, should be there. Um, I may do a little tune-up on this. There's some writing on the bottom of this. I'm going to just not do much with that. Just sort of put some things in here to make it look like there's some stuff on here, numbers and I could probably mess around with this for a long time here, trying to <clears throat> That's with it, but I'm going to stop for your sakes. So uh, all of you who joined me, I really appreciate it. And uh, get this back in the middle and zoom back. OK, it's good to be standing and painting again. If you know I've uh, had a problem with my leg and I've been uh, laid up and uh, painting from a sitting position for quite a while. So it's finally better and I'm able to work with it and I uh, hope you like this painting. Uh, 
Subscribe to me if you're not a subscriber and send a note to your friends if you like my painting. Maybe they'll subscribe and uh, check out my Facebook page. Uh, check out my website to get the sketches and the, the photos. And uh, I think that's all I want to say, say to you. So uh, thank you for watching. And uh, until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.